thank you very much for joining us today in the Campus for Finance. It's a pleasure. Do you think quantitative easing alone could solve the sovereign debt crisis and increase inflation in the Eurozone? Well, I think uh, it's entirely unclear uh, what the transmission channel of QE will be. People talk a lot about the portfolio rebalancing effect, but I'm uh, not so optimistic about it. So I think that the main channel of QE could be the effect on the exchange rate. Uh, however, it's a bit unclear uh, how other countries are going to react if uh, the euro um, depreciates all the time. So uh, to me it's unclear how this is going to work. In any case, um, QE cannot uh, substitute for structural reforms in the member states. And uh, I'm very worried about the fact that uh, countries have really not seriously started to carry out uh, those reforms. And uh, what we see uh, at the moment is that uh, there are many measures that reduce the pressure on countries to mm -hmm. uh, carry out such structural reforms, and this includes, of course, QE. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's kind of a moral hazard for countries if they get uh, measures that help them, but no incentive to do reforms? Obviously, obviously. There is a moral hazard problem. I'm also a bit worried um, because what we see recently is that there are attempts to uh, loosen the Stability and Growth Pact. So uh, the idea is that public consumption is to be treated in a different way uh, from um, public investment. Uh, and although that may be a good idea in general, the problem is that uh, it's hardly possible to define what investment and consumption actually is. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next question is, uh, is too big to fail a big problem for financial markets and for the banking industry? And if yes, how can it be solved? Yeah, too big to fail, or you may also call it too systemic to fail, is a huge problem in the banking industries. And uh, the German Council of Economic Experts uh, has done uh, some analyses uh, for the recent annual report. And uh, we have shown that uh, the implicit bailout guarantees have actually hardly decreased during, uh, uh, or since the, the crisis. So uh, the reforms haven't been as effective in that respect uh, as we had hoped. And um, the crucial question of course is whether we will be able to establish uh, credible resolution regimes uh, for banks. And there uh, I see uh, one big problem which is that the current bailing procedures are not yet uh, uh, credible. Mm. And I think we need additional uh, institutional reforms in order to make bailing credible. Of course higher capital would also work, but there's a lot of uh, opposition, uh, not only uh, from the banking sector, mm -hmm. but also from uh, politicians. But okay. uh, both things, I think, would be very important. What kind of re reforms could there be, additional to bail-in? Well, I think bail-in is uh, crucial, but um, the, the current regime has the problem that there is too much discretion. So uh, the, uh, the um, single resolution board is not obliged to do a bail-in. There are many exceptions. And in addition, it may happen that uh, some country injects money into a bank even before this bank enters a bail-in procedure. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hardly possible to prevent that under the current uh, regime. So I simply have doubts that the bail-in will actually take place. And I think we should change the rules in order to make the bail-in more credible. Okay. Another thing that was discussed in recent days is the separation of investment banking activities from the commercial banking. Do you think that would stabilize financial markets? I think uh, that uh, this is not a very useful uh, debate. So this debate relies on the idea that we have good banking and bad banking. So the good banking is the retail banking and the bad banking is everything related to trading. And I think this is simply, uh, simply not true. Uh, also, um, these, um, these proposals uh, assume that you will be able to simply close down a bank that doesn't do any retail banking. And if we think about it, I mean, the, the first bank um, that, that failed, or the, that failed spectacularly, was uh, Lehman Brothers, and that was not a retail bank. So we should be quite skeptical there. I think there's one reason why separation may be useful, and this is because you may be able to reduce the complexity of banks. And, um, but if you really want to use this in order to make banks more resolvable, 
then the question is whether you need a separate law for that or whether this shouldn't be part of the normal resolution planning. And therefore, I think there could be arguments why you want to separate uh, the different parts of the banks, but I don't think you should do it in the way that is envisaged now. Okay, thank you very much for your time. And thank you. Being here.